Is it weird to ask about tongue evolution? Did they evolve early on, and why such versatile uses? For instance, cats, dogs, people, and chameleons. And I thought, I used to talk about tongues. So I searched on tongues on my computer, and I found this, Zachary. Um, this is a slide from a lecture I used to give on the origin of tetrapods. Uh, life on land, feeding. Uh, water currents can be used to manipulate food in the mouth. Actinopterygians, that's ray-finned fish like salmon and mudskippers, are great at this, but this isn't possible in the air. So food manipulation in tetrapods is usually accomplished with a fleshy, muscularized tongue. Mm -hmm. This is, it is imagined. And then there's also, I think, here we go. I also found this, which is some of the research, <coughs> excuse me, um, that I used uh, for this little tiny piece of this lecture on the evolution of tetrapods, a review from 2002 called The Evolution of the Structure and Function of the Vertebrate Tongue. And uh, Iwasaki here, the author of this paper, also talks about basically you don't need, when you're in water, uh, to have something in your mouth that is muscularized by which you're moving food around because you can use water currents or you can make your own water current by moving yourself through the water to do that, to get the food where it needs to go. That is so that, completely fascinating. Yeah. So this is like, I, this was one of my favorite lectures that I that I created and that I used to give. Like, what are all the things that you suddenly have to solve once you've moved to land? Yeah. And one of the things is once you've got food into your mouth, how do you get it where it needs to go within your mouth, like to your chompers and back into your throat? And like, you use your tongue. So this is this is a life on land solution. How have I missed that? It's totally as a, it fits. Yeah, it totally fits. It totally fits. The tongue appears to be a not a vertebrate, uh, snap morphy. I mean, like some actinopterygians have like a little protrusion, but it's not doesn't tend to be uh, muscularized. It's not very big. And then at the point you got tetrapods, you got all these crazy, um, crazy new things going on, like frogs. Um, Gosh, I think it's all frogs, but maybe it's just the frogs with which I am most familiar. The tongues are connected at the front of their mouths, and so they flip them out. I know it's ridiculous. Uh, and it's then, unholy. It's it's unholy. And then let's see, is it um, is it woodpeckers that it's like oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's wrapped around the back of their skull, mm -hmm. uh, and then they can. I, I could I could look up woodpeckers here too and see if I have the, a woodpecker image. I probably do. Um, and whatever, let's you you keep talking about tongues if you will. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna see hey, if I I'm wondering. So there are a lot of aquatic creatures that are secondarily aquatic that have returned to the sea, and I am betting based on what you have just informed me of that they spend a lot of their time sticking their tongues at <laughs> the prime at the uh, fundamentally primarily aquatic creatures who cannot stick their tongues back out. Totally. I would imagine that happens that's, a lot. I think that's happening all the time. All the time. Yep. All the time. Yeah. Um, I probably I gave I had so many different versions of vertebrate evolution, and I'm oh no, we got cranial kinesis. Yeah, I'm gonna have to think about this more. I would cranial kinesis. It sounds like you're speaking in tongues. Um, cranial kinesis. No, I got it. I know what you I, got it. I, I know, okay, I know you okay, got it. Cr right, cranial right. kinesis. Cranial is head. Kinesis, kinetic, means movement. So um, there are a lot of different evolutions of the head bones, the various head bones moving relative to one another. And so uh, when you hear things like, oh my God, that snake can literally unhinge its jaw. Like, no, they don't unhinge their jaw in order to, you know, eat something bigger than its head. But they have a, a joint that is in addition to our joint, and so they can get a gape that's bigger than we would be able to, given um, where uh, the two main pieces of the jaw, the upper and lower jaw, are actually attached. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I would, I would love to do vertebrate evolution again. I would yeah. love to teach that. That'd that be again. cool. This all raises a question, though. Yeah. Um, the uh, the phrase "he, she, or it" has become unhinged. Is that a reference to snakes? Do you think? Mm, probably. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it probably is. I yeah. think so too. Actually, um, I think it's a reference to a door flapping in the wind or something like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I, I but, think uh, that's actually it. But it'd be better if it was a reference to snakes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, then the rest of the question about tongues, which obviously I could spend a lot of time talking about, um, why such and versatile with. use and with yeah, I have a hard time. Actually, I can I can I can talk with my fingers too. Asking yeah, you know, yeah, that's spreading. 
Yeah, that is spraying. Uh, why such versatile uses, cats, dog, pe dogs, people, chameleons? Well, given that we now know that this is uh, really a tetrapod, synapomorphy being a, you know, a characteristic that was derived at the origin of tetrapods and, um, and shared among them, then you start to see diversification. And so, um, you know, frogs with their tongues attached in the front, at least some frogs, uh, chameleons, uh, with the curled up tongue that then can be sort of like unfurled, like a, one of those, like, what are those, like party, party popper things. Do those have a name? They, yeah, it's not a popper. It's, I don't know so, what those are called. So, yeah. <laughs> exactly. But that's kind of what, um, I, somewhere on this computer too, I have a slow motion video of chameleons hunting with their, with their, the, oh, that yeah. our friend Brad Moon gave me at one point. Um, he was a much, um, much better herpetologist than I am. And so of course he has slow motion videos of chameleon tongues. As yes. one does. Yeah, as one does. Um, so really, it's, it's just about diversification. Once, you know, fitting, the tongue fits the job. And given the tongue originally is about being able to move food around in uh, the mouth once you're in air, where the air can't help you, whereas the water could. Uh, now, they're also, you know, you can use it if you're one of these guys, one of these epic tabbies, uh, to clean yourself or to lick the vitamin D off your fur, lick apparently. Lick the vitamin D is off your crazy. fur, which is a way better explanation than cleaning themselves. I think it's both. Probably a bit of both. Yeah. Um, but there's also navigation. Oh? Yes. Okay. The forked tongue of the snake. Oh, of and the vomeronasal organ, and the fact that the in snake fact, actually the first, yes, yes, of tastes course, tastes <coughs> the molecules in front of it in two different directions. Hence, the forkedness of the tongue, yes. and figures out which way to go based on uh, which direction tastes right. Yes, yes. So you might what what you all should have been wondering is if there's a use for two eyes by which we can get information from two slightly different places and thus get depth perception. And there's a use for two ears uh, by which sound is coming in at two slightly different places by which we can get sound perce depth perception sound. And two nostrils, why not two tongues? So we don't have them. And indeed, I think uh, birds, no birds do, no endotherms do. I think no species-wide endotherms. They're, of course, anomalies. Um, but And I don't think the non-snake squamates do any of them. Yeah, I don't Maybe recall. Maybe birds or the well, maybe. Uh, maybe. Um, but uh, yeah, snakes snakes use the two tips of the tongue to triangulate odors and to get a sense of direction. They yes, they can navigate. They don't. I don't think they. I don't. I don't think we think that they navigate across landscapes doing this. But they sort of they follow scent profiles towards prey. They don't like. They're. It's not about. Oh, it's oh not I'm about trying to get home. Get into the movies. Although it's... I don't know. I don't know. And it's, yeah. You know, it's possibly just for lack of uh, I bet that research. I bet that happens some given yeah. given that uh, the the basics are there but yeah the fork and tongue nice. does this mm -hmm. and uh, this is also the origin of the expression his viewpoint is all forked up mm. is it yes 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 and it's always his isn't it often often yeah